Today's episode of the Believe in Steelers podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag and the matchup for the Super Bowl is set. Got the Bengals going up against the Rams in the big game. Ike, a lot of time between now and then if you want to place a bet on the Super Bowl action, a lot of prop bets. Betonline.ag is the place to do it. Hey, ain't no time like the present. So if you're thinking about bet, just make sure y'all go to betonline.ag. It's always open 365 247. Yes, sir. No, not just football either. Basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, betonline.ag has the best, anything you want to wager on, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet online where the game starts. All right, cue the music. It's time to start the show. Welcome to the Believe in Steelers podcast on the Believe Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mark Bergen. Joined, as always, by my guy, two-time Super Bowl champion, a 12-year veteran of the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 24, Ike Taylor. IT, we had to keep it in the family. Got some guests coming on today's show, part of the Believe Podcast Network. I'm really fired up. The Monday after Conference Championship Sunday, we've got a lot to discuss on today's show. How are you doing this morning, my man? I'm good, Mark, man. I hit one. I lost one. I went to betterline.ag. <laughs> So I'm all good so far. You're doing better than me, Ike. I was 0 for 2 in my picks, and I just need to listen to Ike Taylor. I can't really refute you. During the game, we were texting someone. It was like, listen, I always joke around how you're a psychic. I think you might be a time traveler of how forward you thinking you are with your picks and how you can foresee what's going to happen before it does. But before I get too carried away, I want to welcome in our special guests from the Believe in Seahawks podcast, Lofa Tatupu and Brett Davern. Fellas, Loaded championship Sunday. We're going to start with the NFC championship game. I was hoping that that would be the first game we saw. That was the back half. But Rams are heading to the Super Bowl after beating the 49ers. Uh, Lofa, we'll start with you. Just what was your big takeaway from Sunday's game? Um, you know, Niners have a, a tough time holding on to double-digit leads in the fourth quarter was my big takeaway. And uh you know, it's tough. Uh, they The Rams did do what they needed to get done. And even more so, uh, you know, I'm a man of my word. And, you know, Brett was – he was saying Stafford is the missing piece all along. And I was like, nah, bullshit. I, you know, I didn't know how you gave up on golf for Stafford, even with all the records. But, um, hey, Stafford's making me eat my words now. He he uh, he stepped up when he needed to and uh and brought them back and, and won the game and and that defense of course you know like we know defense wins championships so um you know right. they they did they did what they had to do and so uh I'm, I'm taking back everything i ever said bad about stafford this is the third week in a row he showed up on a big stage brett go but, ahead and hop in here no yeah, I, um well no i uh, uh sorry uh but i i if, if i'm allowed to jump in here i just wanted to say um <laughs> Uh, an announcement to anyone who's listening in Los Angeles. You guys have a football team and they are in the Super Bowl. So get excited about that. Um, nobody here in L.A. even realizes that there's a football team. I'm not kidding, guys. Um, <clears throat> all of the kids here in L.A. love the Rams. Kids are obsessed with the Rams. All of their parents, they're from somewhere else and root for some other football team. So it's a weird time to be in L.A., but, you know, hey, credits to the Rams. They're going to the big game. I thought it would be the Niners. It's the Rams. Um, and we'll see how many actual Rams fans show up to the game because it was, it was a lot of Niners there, a lot of Niner fans there. <laughs> I copped in. Brett. Brett is unbelievable right now. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, Brett, Brett. I was looking at so far. I was looking at the game yesterday, and there was a lot of stars. Well, um, I, 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 we have something in LA called background actors, uh, formerly known as extras. You can get them at Central Casting. You play them a day rate. They'll wear whatever you want, and they'll say whatever you want, and. So we've got experience filling seats. You know, like like at the Oscars, they have seat fillers. You know, so uh, no. But but on a for on a for real note, I did have the 49ers beating the LA Rams. And the reason why, 
just as well as you like Matthew Stafford. I don't like Matt. I didn't at the time like Matthew Stafford like that because um, I knew he was known to blow a few games, a few like out of his 13-year <laughs> career, a lot of them. But at the same time, he was the missing piece. And then I had to retract what I said because Lofa, agree with me if you want, disagree if you want too as well. When you're starting hearing your own players, like when Jalen Ramsey and Aaron Aaron Donald, when they were saying in the offseason, like, we finally got us a quarterback, they saw it before we saw it. Because they're with them every day, all day. They saw what they had with Jared Goff. Now they see what they have with Matthew Stafford. So in my mind as a fan, because I was looking at Matthew Stafford as a fan, is, man, I just know Matthew Stafford. Like, he's cool. When you want to talk about arm talent, he probably has one of the best arm talents. When you want to talk about talk about blowing away games, he blew a lot of games, but when you want to talk about Detroit Lions as an organization, I kind of get it. So kudos to Matthew Stafford, man. Um, Sean McVay and Jim, they was right about this. Uh, it would be more pleasing if they do win this Super Bowl, but I do have the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll talk about that too as well on the show. But at the same time, man, Matthew Stafford, when it was time for him to show up on the big stage, because Lofa, I'm, I'm pretty sure you and I agree on this. Let me see how he acts on the big stage. And he and he showed up and he came through three times in a row during these playoffs. Yeah. Went on the road and got it. Came back home and, and you know, slayed the monster, uh, the beast, because they're 0-6. It had to be in the back, you know, in the back of their minds. Stafford was 0-2 against the Niners. He even given up a 17-point lead in that last week 17 matchup. So, um, yeah, he, he defeated a lot of demons with those last these last three games. And uh, and now he's got a chance to play for the ring that that's, uh, you know, the only thing really missing from his mantle. Well, but also, can we? Oh, sorry. I was just going to ask, guys. I mean, you you guys. I want to hear you guys talk about this because Cooper Cup. I mean, Lofa. We keep talking about Cooper Cup. How ten catches, one hundred and thirty something, right? Or maybe finish with even more. He's the number one receiver in the league. It's not like they're not covering him. But how is Cooper Cup able to just take over every game from a receiver position? Man, do you, you, I, let, I talk about this one since it's a receiver. <laughs> it's like there, there's there's no white guy faster than me, and I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just I'm, like that's 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 how you think as a cornerback. Like this white dude ain't about to beat me, but little did they know. And this can start off with the Cincinnati Bengals. Chris Collinsworth had nothing but blazing speed, and he <laughs> he beat a lot of DBs. Jordy Nelson <laughs> for Green had a had a lot of speed and he beat a lot of DBs. This Cooper Cup kid, you can say what you want to say. He has the speed, the quickness. He's very explosive. They just looking at the young man because he's white, and that's just and, and that's just what it is, Brett. Because how out of seventeen games, this dude stay open, still open, mm-hmm. stay yeah. open. I mean, yeah. What's, what time it is? What time it is, y'all? Wait. It's eleven thirty. I wait. What time it is, y'all? Eight thirty over here. He's still open. He's still open. <laughs> still open. So how in the world yeah. do you not, how in the world do you not know what number ten at? Every yeah. time. Every at all time, times. At, at all every, times. Every time. But I know they thank you because you know I was once part of that. Like man, I'm not. I'm not about to let this dude beat me. And little did I know, you know. He got that deceiving, deceptive speed, and before you know it, he's looking for the ball, and in the back of your mind, you're saying, oh, <laughs> snap, this dude behind me. But Cooper Cup, in my, my personal opinion, he needs to be the league MVP, bro. Ooh. Like, there ain't no like, – you, you, the whole that triple crown, ain't yeah. nobody do that Ain't nobody. And, and to this day, he's pushing Jared Rice records when it comes down to postseason, mm-hmm. carrying over from the regular season, like – Cooper, that dude, man, he don't say nothing. He go about his business. <laughs> he make his play. <laughs> he make yeah. his play. He head back to the goddamn sideline. He look He look on the Microsoft surface. He see what he needs to do. Okay, how can I get open again? Bam. That, that's, that, that's just, if you if you just draw up the perfect receiver, that's cool. He's smooth, that's, man. The man stay open. And let me piggyback off this, too, like, you know, we talk about the triple crown all the time and you might say, well, Ike's got recency bias because now the Rams are headed to the Super Bowl. If you look at his receiving yardage total, it's the most of any receiver in NFL history. 
above the great Jerry Rice, who, in my opinion, is the greatest receiver we the sport's ever seen. And so he keeps doing it time and time again. And what that does for the rest of the offense of a guy like, say, an OBJ and the production OBJ has been able to have with the rest of this offense. To me, the Rams really went all in when they when they acquired OBJ, when he left the Browns and when they made the trade for Von Miller. Mm -hmm. That was an all in move. We're putting all our chips in the middle because the star power in L.A., both of those two guys are are playing. They're in the final year of their contract, so. They might be a Ram beyond this season. They might be testing the waters and see, is someone else going to pay me more money in free agency? Rams are all in. It's paid off. It started with the acquisition of Stafford. But those two midseason acquisitions, you look at all of the star power that the, that the Rams have, where it's like, let's go position group by position group. And it's like a who's who of a who's an all pro or a pro bowl player. No, the Rams, but the Rams have been working on this all in, though, Mark. If you, other than Aaron Donald and Cooper Cup, Everybody with the star power name came through for agency. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the Rams technically has been has been working on this for a long time. Like you say, they just hit on something that was missing, and that was a quarterback. And I feel like Sean McVay finally got the quarterback that he wanted. Now I feel like Sean McVay is finally running his offense, Sean McVay offense. I thought at first between the L.A. Rams when it first started, he wanted to bring that shiny toy, and that was slinging and passing the ball all the time with Matthew Stafford. Once Sean McVay got back to what he do, what he do, and that's play action pass, that's running the ball, that's working the middle. Now you see what the Rams is doing. But yeah, I thought, I thought far as like star power, we knew Aaron Donald was that man. I'm sure everybody in LA knew Aaron Donald was that man. I'm, I'm sure everybody in LA as well knew Cooper Cup was that guy. We just didn't get to see him enough. But you want to talk about Aaron Donald, Von Miller, Jalen Ramsey, Cooper Cup. Matthew Stafford, that's a hell of a starting five. And we ain't even talking about basketball. Damn straight. <laughs> Brett and Loaf, I've got to ask you, are both of you ready to say bon voyage to Jimmy G as the 49ers quarterback QB who plays in the NFC West division? I hope not, because I don't want to play him for several more years. But, yeah, I mean, you drafted a young guy in Trey Lance. I mean, you know, the writing's on the wall. And then just – the way they they were winning in spite of Jimmy G, you know, unfortunately, and and the fact that they they're ready to move on, and I I don't know who it's going to be, but I mean, it could be a guy by the name of Aaron Rodgers who's from the Bay, and uh, you could see him heading back up there, but um, yeah, unfortunately for them, you know, I mean, just look at the way the game ended last night. It was like, man, just take the sack. Like they don't have much, they don't have any timeouts left or whatever. The clock rolls down, you go to overtime, but just you couldn't even get the ball out of bounds. Tipped off his, unfortunately, tipped off the running back's hands right into the DB's hands. But either right. way, that's still a horrible decision. And um, you know, it, it's uh, it's tough. That's a tough way to go out, especially when they were on a roll. But I was just questioning, you know, their game plan. You know, even putting it in his hands as many times as they did. Uh, go back to their first matchup and. They ran the ball like 45 or 46 times just with all these creative gap trap schemes, powers, counters, fake toss, you know, and it was it was incredible. It was one of the most masterful coaching jobs I've ever seen by Kyle Shanahan, who was he was down injury wise with some guys and they took it to the Rams. And I think by going away from that game plan, even in week 17, they fell down early. You know, but they didn't completely abandon the run. They got back in and they won that in overtime. And then now. To, I mean, it came down to quarterback play, as we've, we've been saying. Right. Jimmy right. G just he doesn't look like he's that dude. With he got weapons. Debo Samuel is my favorite player to watch right now, which is crazy because I'm a defensive guy. I was right. gonna, he plays like a you know, defensive guy. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I want to see Shanahan really break the mold and show us this quote-unquote true offensive genius that he really is. And next season, just let Debo do everything. I uh, forget having an actual QB or someone who played quarterback in college. No, seriously, like, just let him take the snap. I'm sure he can throw it a little bit. He can definitely run it. We know that. I mean, the guy's an absolute beast. Like, maybe, yeah, I mean, you, we've had the Wildcat and all that kind of stuff for a few years, right. but I'm talking about even something different than that. Um, if, if they are going to move on from Jimmy G, like Debo, <laughs> the guy can do everything. He did throw as a far touchdown as I'm to, I want to, to Jennings in that yeah. uh, Week 17 matchup. Right? I thought so. I thought I thought the 49ers got away from their bully ball. They got mm -hmm. they got, it was at by bullying other teams, and that's and that's their run game, like you were saying earlier, Lofa. And I thought they got away. I thought I thought I thought Coach Cal kind of 
he relapsed and he went to his Atlanta days and you know he, he went <laughs> he wanted his quarterback to outshine the other opposing quarterback which is something Jimmy G doesn't do too well. You know what I'm saying? Your recipe and and what your and I look at the GM. And the reason why I say bullet ball, they GM played bullet ball. John Lynch played bullet ball when he played. So when he's looking at players and when he's drafting players, he's drafting the hard nose, tough son of a gun. All they want to do is play football, football players. He's not worried about height, size, and speed. All John Lynch is looking for is some football players. And that's if, if you look at their roster. That's exactly what they have. You look at how they play and the style they play, then you look at their general manager. <laughs> like, this, yeah. this is how their general manager play. I thought Coach Kyle got away from that. Coach Kyle wanted to finesse things because he's <laughs> – him and Coach Sean McVay was once on the Washington Redskins football team yeah. together. Coaches, now they split apart. They both they both being successful in the league. But I just thought he just got away from what the San Francisco 49ers do. Well, and that's bu- and that's that's playing bully ball. So yep. that's just my personal opinion, though. Well, you know what really bugs me, guys, and Lofa. I mean, it has to bug you too, as as the guys who do the Seahawks podcast here on Believe, watching the Rams and the 49ers in this game, and now of course the Rams headed to the Super Bowl. But our Seahawks, who I believe own the Niners this year and did pretty yeah. good against the Rams. I mean, we we're kind of thinking about what might have been if it had not been for an injury to Russell Wilson and who knows what other kind of drama is going on up here with our team. But, I mean, right, Lofa? Like, weren't you kind of watching yeah. that game going, man, wish we could it's have been brutal. There. I mean, it's brutal, man. It's two of your, you know, rivals. You don't, you're yeah. not happy for either one of them, <laughs> you know, right. because they're going on to the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, just like well, I said. Also, just based on how we played them this year. I'm absolutely, yeah. Too, though, yeah. You know? Well, we did what – you know, we got back to our identity, which was defense and run the ball. And then once that opens up and they commit that eighth defender to the box, now we air it out. We throw the DK, we throw the, you know, lock it, all those things. But so we, you know, much like I said, we got away from our identity, you know, the Seahawks I'm talking about. And um, and we ended up a game or two out of uh, out of the playoffs. Well, Brett, know- if, if Brett, if the NFL ever reconfigures its overtime rules, maybe they can figure out a way to where both teams can lose. That sounds like it would have been <laughs> ideal for you folks over there in Seattle. Yeah, that would have worked out well for us. We like that. So, Lofa, I got a question about Seattle since we dealing with the Seattle and Steelers podcast. Will, will Russell Wilson be there next year? I don't think so. We've been talking about this. It, now you uh, you don't think so? Yeah. Wait a minute. What? Oh, that's breaking news on here. Oh, I said it on the last what? one. I said he wants out. Ah, oh, what? I I need to listen to. Our <laughs> okay, show. yeah, yeah. You need to, yeah. You need to, go, you need to listen to me when I talk next time. <laughs> so, I just it wasn't even twenty minutes from the report that you know owner Jody Allen met with Pete and John. Not even 20 minutes went by before another notification popped up on my phone that said, Russ is ready to explore options, which was news to me because when you're under contract, you don't have options. So right. I wonder how that report got leaked, who put it out there. And, um, and you know, there's still chatter about that. And, and I said it, when if there was noise at 12 and 4 when we won the division last year, what's going to happen when you go 7 and 10, which we did? And, right. you know, so – but – they're, the only thing that is going, you know, on our side, Sean Payton retired, and that was a, you know, one destination that was circled a year ago because New Orleans, they have a great team, and he's done a hell of a job, you know, through COVID and, and everything because, um, I mean, I, he was playing with a, a rookie quarterback for two weeks there and, uh, and still was in the playoff hunt, and he was just a quarterback away, you know, from, from going to the playoffs again and, uh, and you know, probably chance at a ring with that defense. So right. I, I really think there's there's too much talk going on for there not to be some some truth there to some of those rumors. And I think he wants out. Gotcha. I think I think just like any bad relationship, we're gonna go for one more. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see what happens after that. Oh, I really here? do. Because well, like Lopa said, I mean he's under contract, so exploring right. options I mean, you know, and there's all that kind of uh uh, messiness there with with that kind of stuff. You guys know more about that side of the business than I do, but I really just think that uh, based on the injury, based on how the year ended up, them kind of finishing strong, um, Pete and John clearly are going to still be here. I think they keep it together for one more, and I think if we have the same thing happen next year that happened this season, then it truly, I mean, you kind of 
confirmation of where this thing is headed and I think it would truly be over. But I like with Sean Payne retiring, like you said, Lofa, like I don't know, man. I I I don't they they would have to trade him at this point or cut him, which we I, obviously I think he'd gonna. be willing to, to waive his trade clause his no trade clause. And um I'm wondering, like, do you believe if he goes in, is this if he goes to the Steelers? You know, because you guys oh, are in need no, of a quarterback stop. right now. I know. Don't even Brett, stop. I know. I'm going Don't, there, Brett. Uh, but uh, if he goes in there and he walks in, the do, the Steelers, is, oh, do the Steelers become uh, – do they become Super Bowl contenders, you know, instantly, kind of like a Matthew Stafford happened in L.A.? Yeah, 100%. I mean, they, they made – I mean, they made the playoffs, but it, everything had to fall in line this year. Even, even with Big Ben and his veteran leadership and – him not being as mobile as he once was, they still they still got in the tournament. You know what I'm saying? So now you still got a lot of guys in their prime and a lot of young guys who got a lot of playing time because a lot of veteran guys have got hurt for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now they're going on their uh, second and third year when it comes down to, you know, experience. Yeah, I think automatically that's that's exactly what the Pittsburgh Steelers do need. They need a, they need a Russell Wilson. They need Jimmy Garoppolo. They need a Kirk Cousins. They need an Aaron Rodgers. They need they need one of them because you have in the AFC a Joe Burrow, a Patrick Mahomes, a Lamar Jackson, a Justin Herbert, a Josh Allen. That's what you're facing in the AFC right now. You know, you're facing yeah. two, you're facing five studs that are all young and they ain't even hit their prime yet. And they're going to be going back and forth with Super Bowls till whenever they retire. So, yeah, to give the Pittsburgh Steelers a chance, Lofa, you have to get veteran guy if you want a shot especially dealing with them five guys i just named at the quarterback position in the afc yeah well and if russell went to the steelers i mean he's used to taking shots and getting hit so he'll be all right with that over there at the steelers you know what i mean <laughs> see that's the that's the glass half full in me would be to say you look at the Steelers skill position players juju smith schuster is like the elder statesman and he's 25 years old now I don't expect him to be back in a Steelers uniform. We'll see how that plays out. He's due to become a free agent. But you do have a lot of youth at your skill position players, the Najee Harris's of the world, the Deontay Johnson's of the world, two Pro Bowl alternates who will now play because the Bengals are in the Super Bowl, might I add. Uh, Pat Fryermuth had a really good rookie season for the Steelers. Uh, hopefully Chase Claypool can continue to improve. But you have a lot of youth at your skill position players. Brett, you're stealing my thunder a little bit here because I, you've heard me say this many times on our show before. Steelers ranked near the bottom of the league with salary cap allocation along the offensive line at about $12 million for the 2021 season. You get what you pay for in life, and that's near the bottom of the league, if not dead last. So part of that is you're starting two rookies on the offensive line, Dan Moore Jr. at left tackle, Kendrick Green at the center position, Kevin Dotson, a second-year player at the left guard position. They'll get better right. with experience, but you've got to spend some capital, maybe a free agency, maybe a trade, maybe in the draft, to upgrading that offensive line to replace players like a Marquise Pouncey, David DeCastro, all pro players when they were, you know, sure. doing their thing for the Steelers, uh, you know, a, a team that's known for running the football. So again, kind of glass well, half full. I've got skill position wait, 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 talent. Wait. Glass well, half and would be, not, let's get a better Russ, offensive line. Russ isn't escaping like he used to either. Let's be honest about it. I mean, well, he's not well, Russ, Big Ben well, level Russ, status of. He's not going to sit like a statue in the pocket either, like Seven was doing. Yeah, is what I'm saying. So if you, well, we're we're we're, we're not talking. We're not talking about the Cincinnati Bengals offensive line. The fact that Joe Burrow can move. If you listen and if you watch yeah. it, the fact that a man got sacked nine times in the Tennessee Titans game. Nine times. Mm -hmm. Nine in times. In 51 in the regular season, too, Ike. Yeah. So my point exactly. Yep. Yeah, you do have an offensive line. You you do need a quarterback who can somewhat be mobile. And yeah. Russell Wilson, when it comes down to mobility, <laughs> he's way more mobile than seven. <laughs> at his time so True. Yeah. <laughs> well we're all more mobile than ben at this point but <laughs> russell the thing is though i, I gotta tell you like <laughs> brett i'm gonna let you talk about my quarterback like that i can only talk about my quarterback i'm not gonna let you talk about my quarterback like that look Gone are the days when he's able to scramble around and then leave the ball on the one yard line, Ike, with his okay. head across the goal line. You know, those are those days are gone. That was Super Bowl 40. 
All right. <laughs> but talk about Russell, though, for a second. Russell is not the, that quarterback, though, that he was in those first few years when he scrambled around making those sort of backyard football plays. Every once in a while, one will crop up and you'll see it on Sports Center. But for a lot of the game, and Lofa, we talked about this all season, like he is not escaping the way that he used to. He not like I'm not going to say he lost a step or whatever, but the guy gets hit right. a lot. Yeah. He's had yeah. injuries, not just the injury this year, but. He's played through injuries, ankle injuries, knee injuries. He had one against the Miami Dolphins like four or five years ago. Uh, of was, course, like, of Brett, Brett, he's going to be injured. Saying, not, if y'all make a defensive lineman, not, offensive lineman. Not, if y'all make a linebacker, it's offensive lineman. Y'all make a wide receiver, it's offensive lineman. Of course, I, I, of course I, they're going to stay hurt. Saying, <laughs> Dang it. Oh, shit. I, all I'm saying is, is if you're bringing in Russell Wilson because you think he can escape, he's just not that dude like he used to be. That's he, all I'm saying. He, he still is that dude. He just seldom uses it, man. He doesn't he doesn't use it. Uh, I don't know. Hey, don't hey know. Brett, bro, y'all, y'all, they putting me, me at left guard, they putting loaf at right. <laughs> they put they put they put they putting you at center. And they put a mark at the other right tackle. Man, of course the man gonna get beat up. He gonna get hurt. That's yeah. exactly what he's doing over there. And well, Russia that's what I'm track. saying. He's he's he wants help here in Seattle on the offensive line. So going to Pittsburgh, I'm not really sure how that would help him. I for from a Seahawks fan perspective, it, that would be a way better upgrade. That as you know what I'm gonna ask you. That's <laughs> real. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you: <laughs> Do you think it would be a better upgrade if Russ is in uh, in, in Pittsburgh? For Russ's sake, for Russ's sake, for Russ's sake. Well, I mean, they they have to figure out what to do with Dwayne uh, Brown, uh, who is obviously getting older, and you know, at the end of his career and all that. So they got to figure that out. But I mean, maybe question mark? Oh, no, honestly, I mean, he Russell Wilson is still taking the most sacks in the league, isn't he? Or or. T- Towards the top of the list. Why? Why? And, why? Why? Well, why? Uh, often has a lot to do with it, but you watch the games. He does not spin out like he used to. And I think that uh, speaking of Big Ben, he's a lot bigger than he ever has been in his career and stuff like that. But this is all beside the point. <laughs> I wanted to say, or it is exactly the point. But anyway, the point is, is that I want to move on because what I wanted to say is, is that, and we've talked about it on our show. If he's going to go anywhere, I'd rather have it be somewhere where we get something in return a bit right away, sort of in the form of like a Jalen Hurts or like a Philly situation where we can get it's someone with a little bit of talent. No, but I'm saying no. we can get someone back who can play right away while we're waiting to find another dude because that other dude is not in the draft right now. Uh, so if you ship Russell Wilson out of town, I don't know who you're getting back. You need to get somebody. Brett, we can offer a ham sandwich. In our way. Huh? If I'm back, I, I do not want to go to see, bro. We'll we, take TJ Watt. I, 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 do not, I do not want to go to Seattle. If, if I'm a hell, not how y'all draft for y'all offensive linemen. Really, <laughs> y'all don't even draft for offensive line. You know what? No. I'm going to go to Starbucks and I'm going to get the, the biggest dude I see come in and I'm gonna put him on the offense. <laughs> That's exactly what y'all do in Seattle. Hell no. If I'm a quarterback, I do not want to go there. At least mm-hmm. Pittsburgh draft offensive linemen, Brett. At least we mm-hmm. draft offensive linemen. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I got a, I got a few things to clarify here, Ike. So the Seahawks' first pick in the 2022 draft will come in the second round with the 41st overall pick. So if you're looking to get offensive line help in the draft, it's not going to come till the second round at the earliest. The Steelers have not drafted an offensive lineman in the first or the second round in the draft. For the last nine drafts, David DeCastro was the last Steelers oh, offensive lineman wow. drafted in either the first or the second round. I've got to clarify that. Otherwise, our listeners and viewers will have a field day in the comment section, Ike. <laughs> and that's exactly what we want them to have. We want them to have the field day. That's exactly what yeah. we want. It's spelled Brett, B-R-E-T-T. Get it right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so wild, on, Brett, man. Nine we... years. Yeah, yeah. And I, I found that surprising, too, because you think of Steelers football, you think of running the ball. In yeah. 2020, they finished dead last in the league in rushing. Okay, right. that's why we go on and draft Najee Harris in the first round. It's a bit improved, but that's really the only improvement Steelers offense made in the 2021 season. Brett, wait, I wanted I, to ask wait, you. Hold, can hold, we... hold, hold, hold. Wait, wait, wait. I just want to make one more point. One more point. 
because you're talking about what the Steelers have and why Russell should go there. But let me say why he should stay in Seattle, because we still have a lot of talent here. I mean, DK, Tyler Lockett, you got a bunch of offensive pieces. Rashad Penny finished up the season strong. We don't know what's going to happen there. And a defense that was coming on towards the end of the year, right, Lofa? I mean, there's plenty to stay for here in Seattle. (laughs) He's got one more year here, and we're not going to be able to pay him, bro. All right. So, so, but what's so then your point, Lopez? We're just packing it in. Let's just blow the whole thing up. And I, I mean, hey, no, I mean, build a defense, get some all linemen. You know, I think that's you know showing a very successful way to win Super Bowls. That's what we had when we won the Super Bowl in Correct. thirteen. That's what we yeah. we had: Marshawn Lynch and a defense. And yeah, Russell was a second year guy. Awesome. And it seemed like we went from running the ball, and this is you know I very much very similar to Steelers. I mean. Uh, you just mentioned having drafted an O-lineman in nine years, and it's like you're going spread, empty, all of a sudden, instead of when you were a power running team. And Correct. it's just like a, like almost a, uh, evolving or changing a philosophy and identity that, that we've talked about and getting away from what has consistently been the blueprint to get to the Super Bowl, a run game. And even when we met back in 05, it, both could run the ball and both had defense. And that's that's the truth. And – you know, and so that that that's what it takes, man. I know quarterbacks well, get, I just, get a lot had, of money. They get a lot of talk, a lot of the fame. But end of the day, running the ball, only one guy can say consistently he got the shit f- fucking done. Tom Brady. Well, all right, that's the only I, guy I, that can we, say, hey, quarterback's important. I'm not going to listen to anybody else that tells me quarterback's that important. Look, we obviously got to step it up, but I mean, one pretty bad season with a big injury in the middle of it. I'm just not necessarily ready to jump completely off the ship. And also, let's remember also uh, that Tom is now out of the way in the NFC for Russell. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers still, but we'll see what happens with that. Mm -hmm. So with Tom now gone, it does crack open a little bit of a window. So I'm not really sure if he wants to jump over to the AFC where, like Ike pointed out, I mean, they're kind of, rich with quarterback talent right now oh, deep over there, man. yeah fellas we will take a quick break to say that today's episode of the believe in steelers podcast with the believe in seahawks hosts is brought to you by masterworks and i we talk all all the time about our different sponsors but masterworks help people invest in art so you can invest in art using masterworks and for, with icons like picasso and Monet. So excited to have them on as a new sponsor of the Believe in Steelers podcast. Man, I'm I'm so happy because I need to talk to Masterworks to see if they're going to see if Pittsburgh, if they can Picasso and see if Pittsburgh can draw up or get back to the art of running the football and drafted <laughs> offensive <laughs> rounds. I, your ad reads are the absolute best. So <laughs> for our viewers and listeners, if you go to masterworks.com slash believe that's on your screen right now, if you're watching this stream, masterworks.art slash believe that's B-L-E-A-V. See important disclosures at masterworks dot, excuse me, dot art slash believe B-L-E-A-V. Excited to have them on as a new sponsor. Uh, Fellas, we'll go to the AFC Championship where the Bengals are headed to the Super Bowl after an 18-point comeback victory against the Kansas City Chiefs on the road at Arrowhead Stadium. Chiefs led this game 21-3. to And to me, this game, game came down to this play right before the yeah. end of the first half keeping the Chiefs out of the end zone. I thought that was absolutely vital. Kansas City wasn't really the same. They only scored three points in the second half. This game was won and lost on that play, in my opinion. Who wants to oh, start I'm jumping this in. One? If, yeah, if you guys ahead. believe that big of a pause, I'm jumping in, man. That, <laughs> that, that play was absolutely ridiculous. I, yeah. I, first of all, I called for uh, Smoke and Joe Burrow La- on last week's episode. I picked the Bengals boldly and confidently. I knew they were going to win this. I knew that the whole time. And that play right before half, I, I swear, I turned to Mrs. Davern and I said, there it is. The Bengals are going to win because – you could just see it. I mean, the, the Chiefs, they needed to score there. Uh, that I, Completely boneheaded by all of them on that play, honestly. Like, that, it, it was bad. And a field goal there, it, it wouldn't have been going to overtime at the end if it, all things would have stayed the same, right? So, um, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm riding Joe. You guys can see my background, especially as a Seahawk fan. I, there's no way I'm rooting for the Rams, especially since no one in their own hometown is even rooting for them anyway or knows that they <laughs> exist. So, anyway... 
I'm still I'm I'm gonna ride that one all day. But uh and and along with Joe Burrow. He's my guy. Let's go Bengals. <laughs> now, Jack Jackpot Joey me. I agree with you. Uh me Mark and I talked about this on the show. I had the Bengals winning, I had the 49ers winning as well, but the 49ers obviously lost, so they won't be attending the Super Bowl. But Jack Park Joey, man, I just saw something different to him when he was at LSU. And then when you look at LSU, everybody said, you know, he had these good he had these good wide receivers, and he did. Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and company and Clyde Edwards. Uh, he, he had some guys sitting over there. But at the same time, man, they forgot he was at Ohio State. So what Jack Park Joey did, Jack Park Joey, he bet on himself. That mean, you know what, I'm going to leave Ohio State, which was known for having quarterbacks, and I'm about to slide down to LSU because LSU, all they needed was a quarterback. And then when you get the guys and you get the coaches talking about Jack Joe at LSU, it's just like <clears throat> he's always calm, cool, and collective. He has a, a, a major inner, inner confidence level, major. Like, he's not cocky, um, but you can understand. What you can't understand is if you look at Jack Joey on the sideline, you don't know if the Cincinnati Bengals are winning or losing because he's always keeping his composure. The same. You know? So and that's and that's what you want as as a young quarterback. It just it just so happened. This is his second year and he's playing like light years ahead of his time. You know, and we gotta deal with this guy. We as in the Pittsburgh Steelers and just the NFL in general, gotta deal with Jackpot Joey. And his teammates love him. You know, I don't know if they're gonna say the same thing about it. Aaron Rodgers. I don't know if they'll say the same thing about a lot of other quarterbacks. Yeah, he's good. He's he's good to work with. He for sure will be a Hall of Famer, but he's not one of us. He's not one of the guys. You know, Patrick Mahomes is one of the guys. Uh, Jack Park Joey, he's one of the guys. Justin Herbert, here one of the guys. Josh Allen, they're one of the guys. So when you're one of the guys and you happen to be the guy, it mm-hmm. makes it even better. So for sure, you're not going to work. You're going to see your brother. But just to look at Jack Park Joey get hit nine times in the Tennessee game, come back from 11 against KC the first game, then come back from 11 against KC the second game, and the man just still looking the same, and he never wavers. And then it, it, it's his – for me, it's his swag off the field. Like, <laughs> Jack yeah. Park Joey's swag off mm-hmm. the field has everything about him. You know in Cincinnati when he was doing his press conference uh, a couple of weeks ago, you know it had to be cold because it, it's, it's just cold around this time. Jack Pot Joy got shades on like he bought a hop on a bike and damn that tattoo. So that's letting you know that, man. <laughs> that's that's I'm riding. I'm riding with Jack Pot Joey all day, Brett. Yeah, I mean Me too, man. I said it best, man. And I mean, this is all coming off of a, an ACL tear his rookie year, right? Mm-hmm. So it's incredible. Um after getting sacked nine times ago to KC, they were they were applying pressure. He was getting out of the pocket as he needed to and still making throws. And uh, yeah. It, it, it's wild because this is the first game. It was eerily similar to the, the matchup they had early in the year. You know, um, Kansas City up in Cincinnati, Kansas City up by, you know, 10 or, or 17, whatever it was, only scored three points in the second half. The same thing happened here. Only scored three points yep. in the second half, ended up, you know, losing the game. Um, yeah, it was wild. It was the first time I saw Mahomes not be Mahomes. And from the decision before the half to throw that ball to Tyreek and not throw it out of bounds or throw it in the dirt – you know, just to kick the field goal. Oh. Can't just put that on Mahomes, but as the MVP and he's been to two Super Bowls already, I feel like he's got the IQ to get rid of that ball. <clears throat> he wanted to give his playmaker a chance in Tyreek, and we've seen what he can do, but it didn't happen. The moment that play happened, I said to my two friends that I was watching the game with, I go, yo, it's over. You know, and I looked yeah. over, they showed Joe Burrow, and he was just like, he just nodded his head like, okay, let's go. And mm-hmm. um, it was insane, man. And, you know, the defense – they picked off that screen. Uh, the big, big guy, I forget his name, but he, he uh, tipped that screen up in the air and took it back, gave him the ball right back after they scored. Um, There's a lot of things that, that went right for him, but you can't let Joe Burrow hang around. You just Correct. can't. He's, 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 he's that dude. He And um, with every game, his confidence is just, and legend, is just building. And so... But he um, still never lost a playoff game, ever, in his whole time playing football, <laughs> ever, a, in high wild. school, college, and the pros... Hey. Has never lost a playoff game. That's crazy. That's insane, right? Bananas, that's right? Insane stat. Yeah. And and Lofa, how about for Seahawks fans? 
<laughs> Shout out to Trey Flowers doing his thing. I mean, if the Seahawks aren't going to keep playing and go deep into the playoffs, Trey's there. And he had a you know tough time here in Seattle, especially at the end. Fans always all over him and stuff like that. So shout out to Trey and like wish him well. And I I like seeing him play well and seeing the Bengals play well and seeing him advance and stuff. And I'm happy for him. Yeah, pumped for him, man. I mean, to, from from the season he was having here, and I but I've said for the last three years, them playing him out of position um, <clears throat> to have. All the, all the bullshit he had to pull up with. And, uh, you know, his players, I, you know, it's like, man, like, it's not like we're not trying out there. Like, right. Right. And I don't think we put him in the best position. He goes over there. He's going to the Super Bowl. And, I mean, that's that's a storybook year. And I, I hope he plays his ass off, man. You know, he's a great kid. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask this low fall start with you because between you and I, you have decades of NFL defensive experience. In that second half, Chiefs go punt, punt, interception, punt, punt, field goal interception and overtime what what was that adjustment that you saw that the Bengals made from a defensive standpoint that really stymied the Chiefs offense low fall start with you I mean I thought you know their pressure was getting there you know and not even just when they were sending blitzes but um and this is again where I said Mahomes didn't look like Mahomes even the fun the sack he took you know, that almost knocked them out of field goal range, except for they have Bucker, who's a great kicker. You could see the look on Mahomes' face like, oh, shit, did I just give them the the game? Because uh, you can't take that sack. And so just, um, you know, little things that they were doing, disguising coverage, and I can probably speak more to that, but they just – they weren't tipping their hand, you know. Um, they were, like, on, on the snap. They were doing post-snap stuff that would – you know, it's okay. Now you, you think he's got covered three and now all of a sudden it's, you know, split field safety. And it's just like, okay, where'd that guy come from? So things that make you have to think on the run and, and Pat's one of the best at it, but for whatever reason, he didn't have it. I mean, he did in the first half, 15 to 17, 200 yards, two touchdowns, second half ghost town, man. He didn't have anything. So, you know, give credit to them. Since he, since he, since he started playing more aggressive on defense when it came down to bump and run, as far as like, a linebacker, a cornerback, a safety position. What they did in the first half was they let the guys run around free. McCall Hartman, um, McCall Hartman, uh, Cheetah, they let them guys just run. They, they wasn't putting their hands on them. In the second half, they wind up getting up on the line of scrimmage, putting their hands on them, rerouting those guys. What they took away from Patrick Mahomes was they took away the middle. They dared Patrick Mahomes to make deep passes outside the numbers. And that's something he didn't want to do. Because usually when Patrick Mahomes, other when other than when Hartman caught that long bomb, Patrick Mahomes liked throwing the ball in the middle. Whether it's Tyreek going on the crossing route or whether you see Travis Kelsey doing this thing. The only the only thing they have outside the numbers is some quick screen passes. You get the ball in the receiver's hands, you get the lineman out in front, and there you go, you got an entourage. But other than that, the Cincinnati Bengals, they say, you know what, the second half, we're going to take the middle away from Patrick Mahomes throwing the ball. And that's exactly what they did. They dared him to throw outside the numbers, and that's what he didn't want to do. Got frustrated. Same result as a couple of weeks ago. Up by 17, 18 points. Wind up scoring only three points in the second quarter. But you want to talk about adjustments, man. That's exactly what the Cincinnati Bengals did, man. They adjusted very well on the defensive side, especially in that second half. But from what I saw, my personal opinion, they took away the middle from Patrick Mahomes on the easy throws to his guys on the other side of the ball. Well, and they almost uh, won the game right before the final pick anyway. There was a – it was yeah. almost a pick right before the pick. So the, the, the fumble, like if, if Patrick Mahomes fumbled, if one of his offensive linemen didn't pick that ball up, the game would have been over. over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You well, had the interception over- too. Was it uh, was it Eli Apple the corner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was almost yeah. a pick six to win it in overtime. Yeah, yeah. Right, right before the interception right that then the other interception. Got- yeah. Smoking Joe the the ball back. I have a zone in question for you guys. Uh, we zone in on our show because Lofa's company Zone In CBD is the best CBD in the game. Zone okay. In CBD dot com and use our promo code Believe spelled our way. Or sorry, that's Lofa's line. Lofa, the promo code is Believe. B L E A V. Didn't mean to take the line from you. Uh, you get twenty percent off the zone in question, guys. Um, I, I don't. This is off the top of my head, but uh, is smoking cool again? <laughs> all these guys are smoking cigars after all these wins. What are we, what are we, what are we I'm just saying, like, 
Everybody's smoking cigars now after these wins, and all oh, the commentators cigars. and all the TV coverage is like, "Oh, he's gonna be smoking," and everyone's like, "We love the smoking now and stuff." Yeah. Smoking's- Ike is in his glory right now. Ike, the floor yeah. is yours. You talking my talk because I got my own cigars. Are you okay. a cigar guy, Ike? Yeah. So when you hey, next time y'all just go to Howard G. Uh, Howard G. Cigars dot com. Make sure y'all get y'all a one of a kind because my cigar is one of a kind. Matter of fact. It's been rated number 89 out of 100 in Cigar Snob, the newcomer of the Whoa. year. That's my cigar. So, yeah, after right we get on. off this, after I do my 5.3 mile run, I will go to Corona, which is a cigar bar. I will light me a one of a kind cigar. So, yeah, cigar smoking is cool. Just like if you need to zone in CBD.com and use your promo code, that's cool as well. So, there you have it. When you're zoning in, yeah. <laughs> or whether you're smoking a one-of-a-kind cigar, by the end of the day, once you get done with it, you're going to be feeling good and happy. That's it, man. I got to talk to my producer here. You hear Ike's Afternoon? I got six more podcasts to do today. (laughs) 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 What? Man. Um, I might have something a little bit different in my cigar up here in the Pacific Northwest, but, you know, it's still (laughs) still all love. Hey, hey. (laughs) Every 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 region has its own way of being happy. There we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love it. I have the tall task of trying to come after Ike's masterpiece there. But uh, what I will say is after the game, I saw one of the beat writers said cigar smoke is pouring out of the Bengals locker room after a victory. They're headed to the Super Bowl for the first time in like 30 years. So uh, shout out to them. But yeah, I mean, listen, there's a time and place for it. And after winning a conference championship game, you've got the two weeks off too to figure things out between now and the Super Bowl. A lot of time to recover celebrate why not like you know well, it, the Bengals haven't just, been this victorious in quite some time well if you're gonna do it though do it like Ike or Joe and do it right because it, there, there's other guys that have tried to get it on this cigar smoking trend after championships it doesn't look right like did you guys see uh Stenson Bennett from Georgia he's like couldn't keep the thing lit he's like doesn't not sure what to do with what it rookie. I'm just saying <laughs> hey that's Hey man, that's that's what it is. Sometimes, sometimes you gotta you gotta crawl before you walk anyway. And you said it right, Lofa. He's definitely rookie because y'all almost burnt his hand trying to light that cigar. I was, uh, <laughs> I was at the game. <laughs> I, I was I, I was at the game. so I, I I did I did see that rep. But you know, if you got if if anybody anybody, it, first of all, shout out to BetOnline.ag. One, shout out to ZoneNCBD.com. Two. Shout out to one of a kind cigars. Three, four. Shout out to the Believe in Stillers, Believe in Seattle podcast. Five, six. Shout out to Believe in <laughs> Family podcast. Boom. Oh man, it's starting to sound like the Super Bowl halftime show with all these shout outs. You got that. You got that right. They're paying us. Before we sign off here, fellas, I got to go across the board. Brett, I'll start with you. We're in universal agreement that the NFL overtime rules are. Uh, they're all good after Sunday's result, yeah? <laughs> hey, I don't have a problem with the overtime rules. Play some fucking defense. All these guys bitching about. And it's special teams. It's special teams. Yeah, team. yeah, yeah. Play tell some fucking you, defense. Tell them how you feel, Lo. You I agree. Know, it's part of the game. But you know, you can cry. Oh, we didn't get a fair chance. Oh, we didn't get the ball. Go play defense. <laughs> yeah, it does it does sound like uh kind of like the weakest kid in the neighborhood sometimes after overtime. Yeah. Like, I didn't get it to have the ball. Well then go take it back. Or <laughs> or call the other thing in the coin flip. I don't know. What do you want yeah. from me? I mean a little the, whiny. These, yeah, like like you said, the Bengals, man. They went and kicked off, you know, NFL MVP and they went down and they, they finished the game. So yeah, I hope that put it to rest. I yeah, do so, like how it, you can't just win it with a field goal, though, right off the bat. I like that they changed that part of it years right. ago. That seemed right to me, but I mean, I'm kind of fine with it. Play special no, teams. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm cool with it, but we got to start giving the Cincinnati Bengals defense their props. I'm, yeah, we're, we're, the, we're not talking about them enough. Yeah. To, to, to hold Patrick twice. They held Patrick Mahomes twice to little to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Three points, yeah, twice in, in two the, games in, in, the, in, the, in the four in the quarters. Half. In, the, in the second half. And, and I mean, the, you know, shutting down, even Derrick Henry was coming off injury, but to go into Tennessee, 
You know, after, like, after winning a home game, you know, you might you thought they might have taken a breath and been like, oh, but no, they went over to Tennessee, beat the number one seed on their on their you know soil, and you know, so I man, they're dangerous right now. They are dangerous. They're looking now, like, like the old. They're looking like the old five Pittsburgh still. I didn't want to fucking say it. I didn't want to <laughs> fucking say it, but yeah, they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can end on that well, note. Shit. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they win the game on the field, though, and they don't leave it up to the guys in the striped shirts. Hopefully for this team, they win the game on the field. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a wrap. <laughs> Lofa and Brett, it's been a Brett. lot of fun. Uh, do you guys want to plug your show at all, your to. social media pages at all before signing off here? I don't even think Brett heard you. No, nah, we good, man. Oh, it was, wait, no, it's, it, Zoom messed up. I'm sorry, guys. I All good. I was, I was just want to give you the opportunity of how, you know, people can listen to or watch your show, the Believe in Seahawks podcast. Oh, yeah. Hey, guys, so check us out on any podcast app. Just Believe in Seahawks, spelled the Believe way, B-L-E-A-V. We're also on all social media, at Believe in Seahawks, whether it's Instagram or Twitter. And you can find Lofa and I on social media, too. Lofa is unverified on Twitter, but verified on Instagram. And I'm verified on both, because I was on Shameless one time. <laughs> he loves, loves bringing that up. I'm new to the fucking social media game, man. Shut up. We'll, we'll get you there, Lofa. We'll get you there. Thanks. Ike, shout out to you too. You're the absolute best. I'll go ahead and sign off for all of us here. For Ike Taylor and our guests, Lopa Tatupu and Brett Davern, thank you for listening to a special cross show edition of the Believe in Steelers and Believe in Seahawks podcasts. Ike and I will be back later this week on Friday. Going to get start to break down the Super Bowl matchup between the Bengals and the Rams. But until then, take care and so long, everybody. Peace.